isn't the nature of God. The, the whole nature of God is shifting, no? Yeah. No, I, I, our whole understanding of the nature of God is shifting, which uh, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, what else do you do with this? Not, we're done here, you know, and and uh, and that's, you know, the thing when I talk to people about science and faith issues and how do you reconcile evolution with um, with with Christian faith and the assumption that is very often made, even by good people, and I think very intelligent people is that, well, here's the science part or evolution. Here is the um, the, the, the Christianity part. And they take that off the table saying, well, we got that down. That's not going to change. Now, what do I do with this? And Dennis Lamoureux, a friend of mine who writes a lot about science and faith, he says it's sort of the mentality is almost pinning the um, evolutionary tail onto the evangelical donkey. He said, the donkey's hanging up on the wall. It's not moving. It's there. It's permanent. Now, where are you going to stick this tail? And I think what's needed is more integration, is more synthetic thinking about what is the creation telling us about the nature of God, which of course is a huge question. But that leads us down roads that, for me at least, and I think for you as well, classical theistic categories are maybe a, a ramp to get to something else that they're they're adequate for certain things it's sort of like newton's physics you know it's adequate for certain things but there are deeper things that it's just it can't handle it um and one of those is you know the, the classic notion of the sovereignty of god and which is brought to a i think an exaggerated conclusion in calvinism but it's still out there god controls everything and the more we see about chaos in the cosmos that is real? Is this really what is God controlling? You know, um, I right. keep coming back to Tom Ward, like a non-controlling God, right? It's just, I agree. It just makes sense to me. And and these have been conversations, um, ever since quantum, at least ever since quantum physics started rearing its head in the early part of the twentieth century. We we're over a hundred years into it, and these kinds of questions that affect our theology are not even really talked about in many churches. It's like we're still dealing with the unimpeachable classic theistic models right. and, you know, just talk about whether there's really an up. Is God really up there and out there someplace? Is that how we talk about God? Does that even make sense? Yeah. Right. So, I, you know, that's, that's where I am on this. And I, and I think classical theism is a, a way of articulating what people have believed and there's merit in it. Let's just say that because we're just limited human beings, but is that the end of the story? And that's where I would rebel a little bit and say, well, how can it possibly be the end of the story? Mm -hmm.